I was given an opportunity to come in and, and put my stamp on this and be a custodian of it. And I feel like there's got to be a young filmmaker out there uh, who's looking at the world we've created and, and it feels like he or she knows uh, where it could go from there. So I'm interested in what they have to say. How do you describe the feeling of this franchise coming to a close? For me or for what I hope audiences will feel? Well, let's start with you okay. and then we'll go to the audience. Um, you know, for me, it's 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 deeply satisfying. And uh, I was able to make three movies with two people who are close friends of mine now and then uh, meet uh, my legacy icon uh, actors who, who now are friends of mine as well. And so to be able to look back on this like a photo album or going through my phone, all, the, all these pictures, and uh, I can watch these movies that I made with my friends and remember a time in my life. How long were you thinking about bringing the legacy cast back together? I mean, it was it was a hope and a dream from the very beginning. And uh, even when we made Jurassic World, we felt like, wow, if, if we could earn you know the ability to make another one and then another one, that's what we would do. And, and finally it reached the point where you know, we thought it was possible. And then, you know, how do you do it? And how, you know, how are we going to make a, a believable story that the audience won't feel like, well, this is just some screenwriters who, you know, put this together. So we, mm -hmm. we went all the way back to Ellie Sattler's moment in Jurassic Park uh, when they were eating ice cream. And she talked about how, you know, genetic power is out there now. And that idea, uh, especially in the context of a paleobotanist and how she would know, you know, how the world is in danger uh, from genetic power on a much larger scale than just dinosaurs. And so it all came from, from Laura Dern's character and we built from there. You did something I've thought about my entire life, which is what if dinosaurs were here? What if they're in Delaware and we yeah. have like T-Rex drills? At where the 7-Eleven. Right, yeah. like we, in school we would probably have like T-Rex drills yeah. of like yeah. what to do if one <laughs> comes stomping into, um, where did that where did that idea come from? When I was a child, I would sit in a sandbox like the rest of us and, and play with my little dinosaur toys. And I think all of us, you know, probably had that moment where you, you know, reached for the, the cowboy on a horse and put them together and wondered what that world would be like. And so I got to realize something that I that I really had always dreamed of. And I, I just hope that, that my dream is shared with children around the world. Yeah, you did have that moment with Chris Pratt too, or the little kind of like Red Dead cowboy moment. Oh yeah. <laughs> is this really it? I know this is the end of the story that I've been wanting to tell, but I feel like I was given an opportunity to come in and, and put my stamp on this and be a custodian of it. And I feel like there's got to be a young filmmaker out there uh, who's looking at the world we've created and, and it feels like he or she knows uh, where it could go from there. So I'm interested in what they have to say. I'm sure you've had pinch me moment after pinch me moment. What was your biggest one on this film? It wasn't the the first moment that I was working with Sam, Laura and Jeff because we had been living together and we knew each other for a very long time. It was once everybody was together. It was at the very, very end of this film. You have all, you know, including B.D. Wong and, and DeWanda Wise and Mamadou and Ache, everybody uh, together in, a, in almost a single frame. And I really realized, wow, <laughs> this is, uh, we might have done it. And it was both scary and hopeful at the same time. And now looking at the whole film, I, I really feel like we respected each one of these characters mm -hmm. and, and hopefully gave them the story they deserve. Yeah, I felt like that moment was really earned and not just like forced, they were all forced together. Um, also- <laughs> Get in there. Go get on. in there, everybody, <laughs> get in the frame. Um, and it also probably helped that everybody was living together. So by the time they all got together, they're all actually like, there's so much chemistry there. <laughs> yeah, and it, it also, like we did just so much work on the weekends. You know, I would sit with, with Laura and Sam and we'd look at the scene we were gonna do sit with Jeff and ask them like they're the authorities on their characters and right so like Laura like you know what what would Ellie say right here like are we nailing it and she would you know we would work it out and so there's so much dialogue in this movie that came out of those conversations that Emily and I were just listening and processing and trying to create scenes that they these actors believed in is there something specific you can think of that's not spoilery <laughs> there are several moments uh you know where where Laura Dern uh you know, talks about her own life, even in the first scene where, I mean, there's, they're throughout the movie, but the first scene uh, with her and Sam Neill and she's saying how, you know, she's she's reached a point in her life where she's independent and, and she's kind of living the life he used to live. Uh, and that felt like it came from a, a place where she's at in her life right now. She's in a great place. And so I, I felt like there was an honesty to it that I really appreciate in a movie like this. Yeah. Oh God, it was so great. Um, what's your most 
prized possession that you've kept from these movies? Did you keep the Dilophosaurus? I did. You know, they, they kind of fall apart after a while. So I, I want to put them in, I asked if we could like, you know, seal them somehow and, you know, in, in a cube and so they don't fall apart. But I try to keep like one thing. And on this one, there's a scene in the middle where uh, there's a baryonyx in, in the Malta market that has a prosthetic arm. It's like leather and it's, it's, it has all these claws on it and iron. And uh, they really designed this amazing prosthetic dinosaur arm. And that was the one thing. It's like, I'm, it's coming with me. That's